Well, hello there again, friends. Today is 2-27-2022, and today is the Odin Project Vlog Day 68. And uh, I didn't get an upload yesterday, Saturday, um, because I didn't do any work. Um, ended up uh, having some, uh, my, uh, had some personal um, things to take care of and had family over, um, so I didn't get any studying in yesterday. So today uh, I went full board, full tilt on styling forms and did uh, that sub bullet one and sub bullet subsection two. Uh, for the MDN form styling guides and the uh, internet, interneting is hard guide to forms. And there is no uh, VS Code today, just to let you all know up front. Just a discussion on style, uh, styling your forms. Um, it's a meaty topic. I am not um, just telling you up front. I don't plan on this being a long video. I'm not going to go through everything verbatim uh, we kind of already did that in the previous video uh, when we went over form basics so uh, highly encourage you to read um, both these um, these articles so the form styling guide here um, it has three sections styling web forms advanced form styling and um, UI pseudo classes and each one of them breaks down into its own section. Um, a, a lot of it's repetitive, uh, at least on the MDN stuff. Um, and it is boring. <laughs> I know I mentioned this as my my personal opinion last time, in the last video. And I'll say it again. I mean, these MDNs, it, it, for me, it's just brutal trying to go through these and learn. Um, because they're very dry. And they don't give you any, well, they guess they do here. But typically, they don't give you any screenshotted um, samples, um, but they did on this this one. So this is a, <laughs> a bad example. But yeah, they're just they're just boring. Um, very good information though. As I mentioned in the uh, last video, this is like the meat and potatoes of how we interact with the back end. So we have to make sure we get this right, and so. Again, there's a lot to it, so I'm not going to go into all the specifics of these. But, you know, there's organizing your assets. And you can go, you know, code along with their exercise. Um, I, I would highly encourage you to do that. <clears throat> Again, like I said in the last video, do not copy and paste your content. Um, you'll learn better if you actually type it out. I know that sounds really stupid, but it actually does work. There's a phenomenon in the psychology world and the learning world I can't remember what it's called but basically it's you know you'll, you'll retain more and learn more if you if you write it if you type it out um, essentially and it goes into how to manipulate your uh, CSS to kinda uh, change focuses and get around some of the bad and ugly parts and the hard to work with like uh, inputs like uh, like drop downs, selects, and radio buttons. They per, uh, provide a unique uh, challenge, should you say, um, with as far as styling it and getting it to behave the way you want it to, even though the browser may make it do something else. <clears throat> And they even talk about here is the bad and the ugly categories. So this article starts going over the advanced form styling. Um, again, it's just more framework, HTML framework, and then CSS. They talk about, I will mention this, they talk about a way to get around some system level, system level styling is to use this WebKit appearance, none. Because I think uh, Chrome and... Don't quote me on this. I think Chrome and Safari use what they call a WebKit, and it, they try basically they use it to try to give the a standardized approach to drop downs and interactions on forms and stuff. But it, it ends up kind of not working all the time, and it's buggy. So what MDN suggests is that you give it appearance of none, which basically negates it. And why you duplicate it here? with appearance none is because um, this is future proofing it so like if down the road uh, for the example if I'm wrong but if 
Firefox for browser support wise, but if brow if Firefox not not Firefox Chrome or um, Safari get rid of WebKit, then uh, your code won't break because it'll just go to appearance, which is its own attribute, and you can put it and it'll still equate to none. And then you'll be able to use your own custom uh, set of rules, if you will. <clears throat> if you didn't have this in here and they they quit supporting WebKit, it would break your code and you'd have to basically it would create a bug and you'd have to go find it. Um, so that's kind of cool. So if you are going to use, and there's another section actually in the tutorial in the last article of the of the assignment here, the um, the uh, what am I doing here? Um, the guide here, they actually talk about not using it, which is kind of interesting that it, it they quoted MDN as saying don't use this but MDN clearly says that you can do it um, <clears throat> now it does say no it's a pretty good idea to always include both declarations prefix and unprefix this is exactly what I was saying when using a prefix property uh, prefix usually means work in progress so in the future if the browser vendor co may come to a consensus to drop the prefix the above the above code is good for future proofing against such a event event eventually such an event uality whatever <laughs> it's been a long day i really there's a lot of material in this and i covered it all in one day so as far as me learning it reading it and i'm not gonna say i'm a pro by any means but i feel like i got a decent understanding i just can't wait to actually get my hands on it and get get working with it because that's how i feel i learn best is by doing so anyway i won't spend any more time on that but that's how you get around that if you're having some web webkit problems you can just none it out um, um, talks about some problems with search boxes um, again they're talking about getting rid of the webkit um, as I say It's about the aqua appearance in this example. I don't know if that's overall the answer, but that's for this example. And it looks like it's a f mostly affecting Mac OS and Chrome. So Mac OS, Chrome, and Opera. So, which is, I think, if I, I'm not too familiar in my Mac world, but I think that's the Mac, the Mac browser. So, yeah, so Opera and Chrome. So I, I think I guessed that right in the last section, so. Uh, it talks about how you can then manipulate your searches better if you get ri if you disable the aqua um, and then you can put in your own CSS uh, to get it to do that um, different browsers handle different things often in ugly ways so they're basically giving an example of if you um, put this CSS in there with a type checkbox of width and height that e every browser will render it differently I mean look at this it's just it's crazy and inconsistent. Now I see, and you guys will notice this too when you read it. Now I'm starting to see why why um, people and developers use uh, frameworks like boots, like or libraries. I, you haven't. There's an argument both ways as far as what you call it, but that's just semantics, really. But um, like Bootstrap, using Bootstrap to uh, complete these forms uh, because this is nonsense. <laughs> I mean. The fact that, and you have no control over this, that's the crazy part is, you know, not only do you not have no, no control over what browser somebody's using, you also don't have any control over what version they're using. So, obviously, Firefox version 57 for Windows 10 is going to have a different render <clears throat> than, say, you know, Firefox version 45 on, you know, Windows 10, you know, whatever. Uh, you get my point is that there's versioning issues, too, so it's it's kind of a crapshoot so people like to go with frameworks and, and libraries because that work that works already been done for you and there's no sense in recreating the wheel and it's probably got I'm speaking out of turn here because we didn't really study this yet but I'm assuming frameworks are stay up to date um, I don't know if that's automatically or if you have to you know change your code manually or how you would know about you know updates but um, we'll learn about that I'm sure in the coming coming lessons um, they just talk about the different enables and dis disables and you can do a checkbox for content um, 
again these are just they just go on and on and on so <clears throat> just highlighting them this is a really long one um, is you don't using UI pseudo classes so this would be like your hover your focus your active are the three most common ones but then you have other ones that you can use in your CSS that do different things like require and optional valid invalid in range out of range enable disable read only read write and then they uh, checked uh, indeterminate uh, and default which are for your uh, target checkboxes and radio buttons um, kinda kinda cool stuff uh, again take your time read through it um, play with the samples you know you can actually interact with them so that's kinda cool um, that one doesn't really do much but you know there's probably an example down here where yep here's a required field required email address is wrong I think if you do Oh, there's no error. There's no feedback on that one yet. Here's the, there it is. So yeah, here's a here's some CSS. Uh, maybe a little bit of JS in the background on your on your HTML in action. So there there's required checkbox good last name required and then email address. We just change the focus. It's gonna give us an error because it's not using the at whatever dot com. Yep, so that checked out because it's formatted correctly. And stuff like that um, just goes on. And more examples: styling, enabling, disabling inputs, and read-only, read-write. So it it's just going into other examples. All this stuff's really good. Don't skip it. <clears throat> and then the last one is this one was a little more interesting. But by the time <laughs> by the time I got to this one, I was my mind was my my brain was pretty full. So it wasn't anything new fortunately which is good because I really couldn't fit anything more and I was pretty much losing interest at this point <laughs> um, but uh, <clears throat> I like this because it takes you from like the top down from like starting your boilerplate and going on down through your CSS <coughs> excuse me in a logical order in a way that makes sense too and it give you pictures and examples and they start out by talking about the setup and how to basically mock it up on paper. And it's kind of cool seeing it. This article basically takes you from A to Z all the way through. Um, it gives you, uh, you know, some sample code. There's some sample CSS of what, how you start it out. And, you know, they take you through the forms. And they take you how it, through how it, uh, more of a review, but nevertheless, how the, the form attributes and how it inter interacts with the back end stuff we've already went over yesterday or in the last video um, styling forms um, so yeah there's a lot of good stuff uh, mapping your ID with your four to make sure that they uh, they are in alignment and so the browser knows what to do with it and the screen reader knows what to do with it um, that's pretty much that's for you know, and so it's a lot of review, but it's cool because it takes you really from the top down. I'm not going to read it verbatim because you can see these are really long articles, but it's really good. <clears throat> Maybe if you haven't done this yet, uh, done this section yet, I would recommend, since it is so much to read and, and digest, if you're someone like me, take it in chunks. Like maybe maybe do the MDN or, you know, two of the three MDNs and then take a day off, you know, take the night off. Uh, and then come back the next day and do the UI pseudo class because that's kind of beefy all all in itself and do the HT and didn't do this HTML forms tutorial uh, the next day just kind of break it up because I did it all in one swoop and it's a lot um, I spent with breaks and everything probably a couple hours reading through everything and that was three hours probably and that was probably going that was going really slow and making sure I understood everything so um, to the best of my ability anyway and then I'll fill in the gaps knowledge gaps when I practice with it so um, in the editor but yeah so that's basically it so a big one but nevertheless important but so don't skip over it um, but yeah so that will be enough for this video um, thank you for coming along the journey with me this evening and I uh, hope you uh, learned something new and got some encouragement from these videos thank you to all the new subscribers who have come I appreciate and enjoy seeing your guys' comments, and I appreciate every single one of you for um, subscribing and coming along the journey with me. And like that's uh, just uh, with that said, uh, please like, share, and subscribe for more content. And um, 
let me know in the comments how you guys are doing with uh, forms and the getting started with the the form basics and the styling of the forms and this this uh, module in particular. So with all that said, till next time, see ya.